when you're in the studio, the first thing that you have to do is use your mind, use your brain, be thinking about this. This is a thinking person's craft, hobby, art, whatever you want to call it, but you're going to have to use your head and you want to be safe to a degree. And I'm not going to necessarily say rules, but there are some real rules and they're absolute. And you should follow those as a true guide so that you don't injure your eyes, injure your lungs, injure your body. Studio is where art is made and wonderful things and creative stuff. And when you're working in a place like that, you need some safety gear, safety equipment. So some of the rules are as follows. Number one rule, safety glasses. Get a good pair that fit your face, that are comfortable, they're touching your cheeks. Add to that a ball cap. This is for when you're grinding, okay? When you're not grinding, you don't need a ball cap. So um, I use a ball cap when I'm grinding. This is another one of the rules. Uh, this one is adjusted for my very large noggin. So the thing with the cap is sparks are coming off the grinder and they can get in between your eyebrows. Now I have a Cro-Magnon forehead so they don't really get in between mine, but you may not be a Cro-Magnon like me. So get a cap like this and then the sparks can't get in between there. The next thing is a respirator. When you're grinding certain things, you need to wear a respirator. But anytime something's making dust, you want to get not a little paper dust mask, you want a respirator, something real that can keep all of the garbage out of your insides. Now, I am trying to use stuff that's not really super dangerous, but inhaling it is not really great for you. So always wear a respirator when you're grinding. Uh, some of the woods I use are non-toxic, especially when I'm doing it in a class. So those aren't really dangerous. So if somebody does get some in their system, it's not going to hurt them. But uh, the real thing is get a good one, not a paper mask. These have replaceable filters like this. So that's a pretty good one. Sometimes when I'm grinding, I just wear this old motorcycle helmet because it's comfortable. <laughs> it does keep the sparks off my head. And uh, every now and then a belt will break. And if you're wearing a hard hat or something and the belt breaks, you'll be happy because it will smack you on the head and knock your glasses off and make you feel like the knife is stuck in the back of your leg or your butt cheek or something. So those are my main safety, man, I hate to say rules, but we're gonna say rules. Glasses, hat, respirator, sometimes a hard hat when necessary. So that is important. And if you have those, you got almost everything you need in the shop, but you might need some uncommon sense. The grinder, this is the tool that makes knives, really. You can forge and all that stuff, but you really need to have a grinder if you're gonna make blades. See this little space right here? Don't try to put stuff in there. That's where you get broken parts and torn off parts. And you don't want to put anything there. You don't want to get anywhere near pinch points. Okay, this grinder has got a 36 grit belt on and it is running very fast. And it will grind your finger down to the bone, literally, just like that. So watch out where you put your fingers. Um, sparks are coming off of this thing. That's what I was saying, wear your glasses, wear your hat. When the grinder's running forward, this is the direction the belt's going, you don't want to put anything into it like that. You can grind this way, but if you do this, it's going to want to grab it out of your hand and stick it in your leg. If you've got a bucket that you're cooling stuff off in, don't bend over and get caught in the grinder. Believe it or not, I have seen it at least a hundred times, maybe a hundred and three times. But it's something you want to be aware of. This thing eats, it grinds metal and it will grind you and it doesn't care. It's not your friend, it's your tool. And if you disrespect it, it will teach you not to. Put your bucket of water somewhere like here. See that? So super easy. You don't have to, it's not anywhere. Or set the bucket up on something. Makes life a lot easier, keeps you from getting eaten. In conclusion, when you're using this and you're learning this, the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. Don't be afraid of it, get right in front of it, use the grinder and get comfortable, but not too comfortable. Remember, it will hurt you, but it can also make stuff and you can enjoy it and you can use it for a lot of things.
The forge can be dangerous. Of course, it's hot, it's fire. These things will get up to 23, 2400 degrees. You don't want to get burned. This one runs off of propane. This is a chili forge. These are my favorite. Now, a couple ways to light it safely. You can light a piece of paper with a little bottle torch like this, which is either map gas or propane. Get that lit, and then you can turn the gas on and light your forge. And you have the paper to deal with. That'll burn up. Lighting the forge my way, I don't tend to put paper in it. I like to take my torch, turn it on, then turn the gas on. Now it's lit. As soon as it's hot, then I'll start forging. If you watch videos of me, I'm going around the shop and I'm taking tongs and I'll use some and I'll throw it down like that. Now what happens when you set them on your anvil is your anvil will just throw them off itself. That one in particular, this one's okay with having tongs on it. Um, things just don't stay on there, especially your hammer. Leaving your hammer on the anvil is rude, especially when you're working in a shop with other people. Take your hammer that you're using, take it with you or set it down beside the anvil. Do not leave it on the anvil. If you do, I'm gonna knock it on the floor because I wanna forge something and I'm using a different hammer mostly. So it's just one of those things that you should know if you're in a blacksmith shop, if you're making stuff with other people around you, do not leave the tongs or the hammer on the anvil. And never, ever put your butt on the anvil. That is rude, obnoxious, and unacceptable in this studio or any blacksmith shop. Now you know. One of the biggest things, the most important thing is do not be afraid to fail. What does that mean? That means you're not gonna be any good at this when you start. You just ain't. But if you keep doing it, you get better and better and better. Do not bog down in the fear of failure. Also, don't bog down in the fear of screwing something up. I made things, I'm pushing the envelope, and I get right to the end of it, and it's kind of destroyed, it's unusable. But I'm using that time that I spent on that piece to learn, man, I just found a better way to do this. I just figured out how to fix it. That's one of the ways that I have developed a lot of stuff that a lot of people are using right now, a lot of things that are popular. Um, I didn't invent fullers and knives, I didn't, but I helped make them popular and that started from a screw up. So don't be afraid to screw something up. You will learn tons and tons and you have to keep moving forward. You cannot stay in the same place. Stay in the same place, you'll die, you'll fizzle out, you won't get any better and it's worse than going backwards. Um, so always moving forward, don't be afraid to get out there and be a maker.